Okay, hello and welcome. Today I'm going to attempt my first retro brighting. I've got a lovely Commodore 64C, as you can see here. Hopefully you can see how yellow the keys are. The uh, case isn't too bad, so I'm going to leave the case for now. This is my first attempt. And I believe you need more of a uh, hydrogen peroxide cream for the case. Unless you want that bit in a giant bath of stuff. So there's the keys. So all I'm going to be doing today is removing all these keys. Giving them a quick wash. Putting them in this lovely tub I bought here. Whack it in the garden. With a nice solution of hydrogen peroxide. And this is 12% so I'll probably need to dilute it down a bit. For experiment. Uh, food grade. Just the easiest, cheapest option for me to get uh, from these suppliers. If anyone's in the UK, they're a trusted supplier, they will deliver to your home address, no problem. That's 12% hydrogen peroxide. So, all we're going to be doing is popping all these keys off with my lovely cheap tool. It came with something from eBay the other day. Not the best, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'll probably fast forward to the key popping. It can be a bit tedious, but hopefully we'll see a difference later today. Now it's not particularly sunny today, but I do have a UV lamp. So if not sunny enough, maybe we'll stick under that later. Okay, so here it goes. I'm going to go in this. Uh, they're dead easy to pop off usually. You will have the odd stubborn one. Put it on, on each corner. Pull it upwards as much as you can. Maybe give it a wiggle. You'll need one container for the keys, uh, which will be washing in, and one container for the springs. Don't forget the springs, because they all tangle together when you do this. So here goes. I forgot to get a container for my keys, so uh, springs. One second. Right. Fingers crossed we don't break any keys. That's why I'm experimenting on this Commodore 64C before trying on the Amiga 500. Obviously, because Amiga 500s cost more. Well, hopefully that's a good sign. So that one came off. One thing I should also mention, which I forgot to do, is take a picture of the keyboard before you start doing this. Um, so you know exactly where all the keys go. Just makes it a lot easier afterwards, and in which direction. Which I'm going to do now, so excuse me. Okay, we're back. We've taken a picture. So here it goes, we'll carry on. It's quite early in the morning, so I'm still a bit half asleep, I think. Hopefully you can see the yellow in there is a good example. So that's what we're hoping to remove a bit of. What we'll also do, what I tend to do for keyboards, is I give the springs just a little bit of a stretch just to give them a bit of springiness back. Nothing too much, you don't want to overstretch them. Just to restore the spring a little bit. There you go, that's all you need to do. Obviously, if there's any rusty ones, ideally replace, but if you're like me, you don't have replacements, I tend to put the worst looking offenders on the keys where they're less likely to be used. In fact, you can see part of one that I took off a spectrum that's so rusty, it just sort of literally snapped apart. But that spring was still fine, but obviously putting a key 
isn't used as much. These keys are coming off amazing. When I did this to Spectrum 128k the other day, it was really hard to get each key off. Um, same with the Commodore 64 Breadbin Edition. I found it quite tricky getting each key off. These are coming off brilliantly. It'll make my life a lot easier. It doesn't look very dirty underneath, to be honest. So we're going to have a look underneath. I mean, I've done the usual surface cleans and vacuums and whatever, but it's really clean. Normally, no matter how much clean the outside, there's a layer of grime under there. Which obviously I'll take this opportunity to clean this anyway. I wonder if it's been done in the past under the keys. It's not coming off super easy. Be careful with the shift lock, it's a different key. I don't know yet, I'll have to look, but on the thread bin, I have two wires to the back and a different circuit. You can't just pop it off like the rest of them. I'll leave that till last and have a look. It does just pop off, but if you just yank it, I pulled the circuit from underneath up, which is almost a disaster. All we've got to do is keys, which I'm not sure how to remove, and then the sign's getting passed off as well, so we're going to have a little bit of 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 and it, because these keys were coming off great anyway, there was a doddle. There's one spring there, there's two in there, and the metal bar. Obviously, I think I'll have to take the metal bar out to retro bright. Well, I don't know what the hydrogen peroxide would do to it. So, I'm going to remove that just whilst we do it. Leave those. Pegs in, they're plastic anyway. It's 
It's one of the worst offenders for going yellow. See, white, well, cream, yellow, cream, yellow. So you want it all to be like that. And that is it. Chopped in. We'll give this a quick vacuum down and a wipe. But it's not too bad, to be honest. And we now have a bucket of keys. Which I think we'll give them a surface wash in the sink just to rinse them down. Pour some hydrogen peroxide on them. Also wearing gloves and goggles because this is 12%. Um, pretty sure you can use any old uh, hair bleach and hydrogen peroxide, but this was just easiest for me to get. I'll water it down a bit. Stick it in the sun with some cling film across. Give it a bit of a shake every few hours. I'll check on it every hour, I think. And uh, we'll come back to it, see what it's like after. It's all induced. Give this a superficial wipe down, really, to be honest. You can see the difference there. Just remove the surface dust. There you go. I think that's all this is going to need, this one, to be honest, because it's pretty clean. Make it round with the yeah. cotton swabs and some alcohol, just to sanitize them, which are hard to reach bits. You could take the keyboard out at a case, but try and keep this as simple as possible. People maybe don't want to take it apart or have done so before. Don't want to risk taking apart a couple of under 64. That's come up pretty damn nice. That's the side I haven't done yet. There's the side done. Pretty good. Let's leave the keyboards in. Got a lot more grime and dirt underneath. We might have to take it out. There's things happen. It's a good clean example of the Commodore 64 c Then you think it needs any alcohol wipes? I just go around the edge to see what we get. Got some more bread. Nice for alcohol. Rinse on the edges. Let's see what dirt we get. Can you see that? Just from around the edges there. Hard to reach bits. I'll give it a swipe. Let's then go in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's pretty clean, clean enough. That's it. I'll go uh, do these keys. Okay, the sun, the sun has gone in, so these keys need a bit more work. So I'm attempting this. Don't know if it's a good idea. It's a UV light. It's a UV A, B, and C, I believe. Just over the bowl. It's 11 watts. Uh, we'll just sort of give it a try. We'll keep a close eye on it and see if it helps. The keys have improved. But they've been out all day and they probably need at least another day i'd say so we'll see how this goes okay and here is the finished result commodore 64c with the keys retro brighted now, it actually took me two days of retro brighting it's not that sunny where i live but after the first day, you could definitely see an improvement, so I'll give one more day, sat in the sun. As you can see, I think you'll agree, compared to before, it's looking pretty good. Thanks for watching.